Before I even begin this video, I would want you to know that this video doesn't promote or glorify the drug industry. The purpose of this video is to give nothing but information. Also, if you are a Narcos fan, this video contains spoilers for season 3. Ever since Netflix started streaming Narcos, the global audience was exposed to the dirty business of cocaine. What started off with Pablo Escobar in the Medellin cartel was taken further by the Kali cartel. So who were the Kali cartel? How did they operate? You're watching Hashtag Trending on BG Official and this video shall tell you everything you need to know of the Kali cartel. Did you know that before entering the cocaine business, these gentlemen were into kidnapping and were known as Las Chemas which was led by Luis Fernando Garcia. Before getting into cocaine, they used to smuggle marijuana. But soon due to low profits, they moved into cocaine business. In the early 1970s, the cartel sent Helmer Herrera, popularly known as Pacho, to New York to establish a distribution network. It was perfect time to enter the US market as the US Drug Enforcement Administration, which is also called as the DEA, was concentrating on heroin and cocaine was of least priority for them. This ensured Pacho had a smooth route for the job at hand. By 1977, they formed the Cali Cartel. The founding members were the Rodriguez brothers, Gilberto and Miguel, and Jose Santa Cruz, also known as Chepe. All these three men came from a richer background as compared to the other cocaine traffickers of that time. They were also called as Kali's gentlemen. Gilberto was known as the chess player, Miguel was called the lord and Chepe was called as the student. They later added a fourth partner in the face of Pacho. There were other close associates to the cartel. Jorge Alberto Rodriguez who was known as Don Cholito, Victor Pacino Formecu who was known as the chemist or the beast, Henry Loiza Sebelos who was known as the scorpion, Jose Fidorre who was a former member of the Gorilla Group and Fanner Arizabeleta Erzaez. Unlike the Medellin cartel of Pablo Escobar, the Cali cartel operated under a structured manner under the leadership of Gilberto. One can say that they worked like a Fortune 500 company. They created multiple cells which would report to the cell manager called a Celino. These Celinos would then report to Jorge who eventually reported to Cali cartel. By mid-1980s, Jorge found his own cartel called the 400 cartel and started to work independently. As for Kali Cartel, these cells were then merged under multiple groups which Gilberto created with the help of his accountant, Guillermo Palomari. Each group had a different purpose and function, narco-trafficking. This group had control over the processing labs, shipping methods and also the routes, military. This group took care of the security, punishments and bribing of the military and police officials. Political. This group was responsible for establishing and maintaining link within the Colombian government, federal officials and local authorities. Financial. This group looked after the money laundering, front white label businesses and also the cocaine business. Legal. This group took control of the representation of the captured traffickers, hiring of lawyers and lobbyists and also took care of overseas legal issues. No wonder the DEA chief Thomas Constantine called the Kali cartel as the biggest most powerful crime syndicate they had ever known. Though the cartel was based in Colombia, they established operations in Peru and Bolivia. They also developed new routes via Panama. It is believed that they were also involved in heroin business but nothing has been proven against them in this case. At their peak, they are said to have control of over 90% of world's cocaine market and are considered to be directly responsible for the growth of cocaine in Europe. It is said that by mid-90s, the cartel was a multi-billion dollar enterprise. As per reports, in 1996, the cartel was grossing an annual revenue of $7 billion from the US alone. The incoming money was a big issue as it had to be laundered into legitimate business. This money was massed under multiple front companies which the cartel owned. The earliest of instances of money laundering was when Gilberto became the chairman of the Banco de Trabajadores. The bank is said to have laundered money for not just the Cali cartel but also for Pablo's Medellin cartel. The bank also gave the associates of Cali cartel overdraft accounts and issued them loans without repayment. Later, Gilberto founded Inter America's bank operating out of Panama. Gilberto then started Grow Radial Colombiano which is a radio network with over 30 stations and also a pharma company called Drogas Le Rebeja, which it grew so big that there were 400 plus stores in 28 cities and employed 4,200 Colombians. This pharma company is said to be valued at $216 million. In the infamous cartel wars, Pablo bombed the stores on 85 occasions, killing 27 people. 
the cartel was created at Arcus, across Colombia. Kali cartel ensured that the family of the gang members stayed within Kali. They considered these family members as insurance policy against their members. The cartel killed its members whenever they committed mistakes, especially the junior members. The cartel also took special interest in what they called social cleaning. They murdered prostitutes, thieves, homosexuals, street children and homeless people all in the name of this social cleaning. The dead bodies would be then thrown in the Coca River which came to be known as the River of Death. The dead count was so high that it is reported that the municipality of Marcella went bankrupt by the cost of recovering these dead bodies from the river and conducting autopsies on them. The Kali cartel also had a counterintelligence network. It is said that their network was so powerful that it often took the DEA and the Colombian police by surprise. In a raid in 1995, it was established that the cartel was monitoring all phone calls made in and out of Bogota and Cali, which included the US Embassy and the Ministry of Defense. It was found that the network included government officials and around 5,000 taxi drivers. So how did the cartel go down with all its money and strong counterintelligence network? Jorge Salcedo, the head of the cartel's security, is said to have helped the DEA in taking down the cartel. Seizing cocaine shipments weren't enough. The cartel leaders had to be arrested. Gilberto was the first to be arrested at his hideout home by a team of DEA and Colombian police. Jose Santa Cruz was arrested in a restaurant till Miguel was captured in a raid. Even after their arrest, it is believed that the cartel continued operating from inside the prison. Pacho, however, was in Mexico at the time of the arrest. He turned himself in in 1996 and was later killed inside the prison. The Rodriguez brothers were extradited to the US in 2006 and pleaded guilty in Miami. They had to forfeit $2.1 billion worth of assets. This event along with the fall of Pablo Escobar are two classic examples of how drug trafficking turned out to be fatal for the cartels. Hope you learned a fair deal about the Kali cartel. I'm sure if you're a Narcos fan, this video was worth a watch. Hopefully you will like and share this video. Do subscribe to BG Official for getting updates on my future uploads. You can also check other interesting videos on my channel. Goodbye for now. Cheers.